All right, what's happening, everybody? Welcome to Earth Science. Time for a new unit. And what we're going to consider here, this is going to be kind of the whole unit on a page, but also kind of the whole marking period on a page. Where we're going this unit is, is weather. That's the big thing, right? We want to see how the atmosphere reacts to this energy that's coming out of the sun. The mini unit we got to do first really is just that. Sun's energy. The Earth is like being bombarded every day. Every day, every moment, half the planet is facing the sun. And the sun is, is brutal. It's, it's, it's beaten up the planet. If you've ever gotten a sunburn, you realize that the sun is it's hot, right? If you leave a, a shirt outside on a clothesline, you see it gets faded. Uh, if you leave things near south-facing windows, uh, like book bindings. You know, we uh, one of the places I lived out west had a uh, window facing south, and the book bindings all got bleached out. Sun's brutal, and it's constantly hitting us. So what are the effects on that? And what does that do to the atmosphere that's between the planet and space and the sun? So let's label a couple things in this diagram. Think about where we're going. It's going to be this button right here. Let's make it bigger. Sun. Space. Come on. Atmosphere. And Earth, planet. Now, we're not to scale even remotely here. Different things are blown to different proportions so that we have space to uh, write some things going on in there. Let's start with what is like what's powering the sun? Why is there an energy even coming out of the sun in the first place? This is review from the first marking period, a word we should know. It starts with F. It's that process of two hydrogen molecules mushing together to form a helium and releasing energy, fusing together, if you will. Fusion, nuclear fusion. Um, that's powering the sun. That's just a, it's, it's a crazy amount of energy coming out of the star and traveling in all directions. And our little tiny planet near that star gets hit by some of that energy. So what I'd like to try to do is draw like a wavelength of energy coming out of the sun and heading towards the planet. I did a better job at this in class on the board. Whoop. But hey, close enough. Make it look kind of like this, best you can, with about that wavelength. One of the discussions we got to have here, the length of the wave is important. So try to aim for about that if you can. See how you do. What we want to get down, what the main part of this little mini lesson is going to be, and what the classwork you're about to try is going to be about, is the three forms of energy transfer. If energy is going to move in this universe from one place to another, We've got three ways in which that happens. And we're going to label them in red. First one, what you just drew is radiation. That's energy traveling by electromagnetic waves. It can go right through space. That word sometimes has this like negative connotation in people's heads. There's all kinds of form of radiation. Yes, there are some dangerous ones. But radio waves are a form of radiation. Plain old visible light is a form of radiation. And they're perfectly safe. It's any form of energy traveling in these electromagnetic waves. And I know that's like a $5 word, but don't worry. We'll, we'll practice this more. We'll get it down. Um, the lab you'll do has a lamp that shines on different objects. It radiates its energy. At McDonald's, there's a lamp that shines on French fries to keep them warm. It's radiating energy. All right. Can go through right through space, which is critical for allowing the... Uh, Energy to get from the sun to our planet, of course. Well, what's next? If there's like a physical touching, it hits the ground and it spreads through things in the ground into the shallow ground. It doesn't go like super, super deep. But if by touching, or even if it's like touching the atmosphere, it can it can physically contact and spread its energy that way. Yet the key part of this one is that touching physical contact idea. And the name of this one is conduction. And I'll just do a separate box here in a different color to, like, say, in parentheses. You need physical molecule-to-molecule -molecule contact for that. Let me grab something real quick while you write that. I'll show you what the lab's going to be like. Spoiler alert. But it's, uh, it's one of the questions in the classwork, so you might as well see it. This is the apparatus we're going to use to, to demonstrate and to test conduction. You're going to take this metal bar. Put one end in cold, uh, very cold water, one end in very hot water, and we'll see how heat energy manages to go across the bar from the hot cup 
into the cold cup. And it's all molecule to molecule contact. You need physical touching for that to be a thing. So there's two of three ways that energy can move. The third will be once this atmosphere, we got one other thing to consider with, with the atmosphere uh, heating, but when it gets warm, let's go way back to our first unit. I'm going to make a slightly smaller font here to say that air heats, expands, becomes less dense. Now, going back to the first unit, let's think about air that's less dense. What does that mean it does? Hot air blank. We talked about hot air balloons a lot during the density units. Hot air expands, it's less dense, so it rises. But will be replaced by relatively cooler air that therefore is more dense and sinks. So you get this like circulation of air or, or water. This can happen in water. This, uh, if you've ever boiled water for like macaroni and cheese, you dump the macaroni in, you see it like whipping around in little circles. Those are little examples of this current, which is called, <clears throat> excuse me, going back to red, convection. Convection cell. Energy transferred by the flow of a fluid. This does not work with solids. Solids and liquids, yes. Solids, I'm sorry, liquids and gases, yes. Liquids and gases can flow. Solids don't flow, so convection would not work in a solid. And you get these currents called convection cells. All right, so there it is, one, two, three. Those are the only three ways energy can transfer. So, like, I heat with wood at my house. A wood stove, right, in, a, in, a, in an insert, like a big old stone chimney, and there's a, there's a wood stove insert in there. Get it going, fill it with wood, get it on fire. And if you stand near a fire... You can kind of feel like you almost feel the glow of it. You feel like heat just like coming out of it. Which one of those three would that be? And like the stone around the fire gets gets warm and you can like stand there and like kind of feel it. And it actually, this form of heat can like penetrate past your skin. It doesn't just warm your skin. It can like really get in your bones. That would be radiation. Radiation, the, the heat from the cast iron, the heat from the stone, and the heat from the coals themselves glowing and giving off that, that radiation. Some wood stoves, mine included, have a fan where it pulls air in on the sides that gets warm along the sides of the firebox and then shoots it out through the bottom, heating it the whole time, and then it sends it so that the air in my living room is circulating like this with the hot air rising and the cool air sinking. Which one is that? Convection. Sometimes I accidentally hit the cast iron of the wood stove while I'm trying to put wood into it and burn myself. Which one would that be? Conduction. All right. All three of these, like, yeah, they're, they're kind of... Maybe difficult to see in like a grand scale earth science way. But there's lots of small examples where this takes place, like the fire. Okay, what else? So what else can happen? Radiation can just bounce. Like it hits, it, if it's at a low angle, it can even bounce right off the top of, of the atmosphere. Uh, it bounces off the top of clouds because they're white. It bounces off of like a lot of things that are white, like uh, like take snow covered fields or, or, or vast ones like, like polar ice caps or, or, you know, Greenland, it's all white ice hits that. And it's going to bounce right off. And if it bounces off, it kind of maintains this wavelength and just goes shooting right back out into space and boom, it's gone. That's not really even an energy transfer. That's just the radiation going here and then going here. So what we got to think about is what are the ones where energy like hits and actually heats the earth? If it just bounces, it's not heating. Otherwise snow would melt instantly every time right we wouldn't even know what snow is um what are the ones where it hits the earth and it sucks in and absorbs a little bit so i'm going to just blow this up a touch to give myself more space some surfaces are better at absorbing energy than others and in fact that's what your first set of labs is going to be your triple lab we'll do down here the dark slash rough r-o-u-g-h uh, heats faster. Things that are dark and rough heat faster. Things that are light and smooth heat slower. Dark, I think it's obvious. If you've worn a dark shirt outside in the summer, you're, you you notice that. If you've walked outside barefoot and you've stepped on the grass or on blacktop, you notice that. Blacktop's like a perfect example. It's both, it's both dark and it's got a rough texture. It's like got a little, little tiny, you know, where the pebbles come together, it's got that rough texture, which gives it more surface area, more ability to like grab that heat and absorb it. 
this is really going to be what drives weather. When I say that we're doing like the whole unit in a, in a one little diagram here, the idea that some surfaces heat differently. So you take this energy out of the sun, it hits the curved earth at different angles. So more efficiently when it's higher overhead, we did that back with seasons, less efficiently when it's at a, at an angle or when it hits something like dark, rough surfaces, you know, picture the difference between sand and ocean, uh, like a desert, when I say sand, a desert, an ocean, a forest, or a glacier. All four of those are going to have very different reactions to the sun. And when there's different reactions, there's differences in heats. And when there's differences in heats, the air is going to react to correct that. If nature doesn't like imbalance. When there's differences in heat, and there's differences, therefore, in pressure, the air is going to move to try to correct for that difference in pressure. And really moving air is all meteorology is. That's, that's weather right there. Air is moving. And it's moving because the earth is differentially heated by this by this incoming solar radiation. So yes, you can go get a, uh, you can do a lot of very difficult college work and get a degree in meteorology. End of the day, that's it in one sentence. The air moves because the sun hits the earth in different ways in different places. And the air wants to correct for that imbalance. <clears throat> cool. All right, so what else? Anything that's warm here in this universe, you as a warm-blooded mammal, turning food into like metabolic processes, staying alive, being at about 98 degrees, you are going to give off energy. I'm currently warm. It's certainly in the context of this universe, even if it's a cold day and oh, it's cold in here. In context of the universe here, you are, you are a warm body. You're going to be giving off radiation. I have an infrared camera I'm going to find and we'll play with it when you're in the room at some point. You can point it at different things. You can see how much infrared energy it's giving off. It's not like a light camera that works like the way that most cameras you've played with in your life. It picks up on that like heat energy, that infrared energy that things give off. Now there's a trick to that. And here's the idea. Energy comes out of the sun, hits the earth, the earth warms up. That means the earth is going to be giving off more infrared energy. The trick is that when it gives it off, it's a longer wavelength of energy. And that longer wavelength of energy goes through absorption. The ap atmosphere can absorb that energy a lot more easily than it does this. Excuse me. This energy, it just allows it to go popping right through the atmosphere. This energy gets trapped or absorbed. So right there, that little star that I drew, absorption. Greenhouse gases in the atmosphere are, are the ones that do this. Carbon dioxide, methane, and water vapor are good at grabbing on to that infrared energy as it, as it escapes bodies. This is the same thing. If you've ever been in a greenhouse or a hoop house or one of those things, or keep it simple, parked a car in a parking lot with the windows up, especially in summer when, it's, when the sun's more intense. What happens? The sun's energy goes popping right through the windows, no problem. Hits the inside and the inside heats up. The things like seats and whatever. If it hits like, like say, the chrome little belt buckle, belt buckle seat, seat belt thing, you know what I mean? If it hits that, which is shiny, it's going to hit that and reflect and just leave right out the window as easily as it came in. But if it hits something that can absorb energy, like anything that's dark colored, the seats, the interior, anything, and all of that warms up, then that gives off infrared energy like this, and that infrared energy cannot escape the, the windows of the car. So it's trapped. It's the greenhouse effect. And CO2 and methane do that very tangibly. Like there's, if you're thinking, oh, there's controversies, maybe the sonority is not, uh, not telling me the truth. That's just, that's just reality. Yes, there are politically driven controversies around climate change. This is not controversial. This is just exactly how the nature of a greenhouse gas works, just as it does in your car. And we will, like, we're not going to leave it there. Today, that's where we're going to leave it, but that's not where we're going to leave it, like, long-term with this course. We'll continue to analyze that, think about that in a larger context, but I don't want to get too complicated today. Energy comes in, heats something out. When something's hot, it gives off more of this energy. That energy gets trapped. Close enough. I'm not even going to write those greenhouse gases. We'll worry about that another time. I think that's going to be about it. I'm going to throw one more thing at you quickly that's maybe small potatoes, but I'm going to throw it out there because you never know if you're going to run into it on a classwork, maybe somewhere on question nine. Perhaps it'll pop up. Some energy, <clears throat> when it comes out of the sun, that's less good of a line, but no big deal. When it 
Light can go f faster in less dense materials. You've heard the speed of light thing. Speed of light in a vacuum is what we usually measure. It goes slightly slower, not like slower enough that it's a big deal to like our everyday reality, but it goes slightly slower through a more dense material. So as you get into more and more dense layers of the atmosphere, it goes slightly slower and it goes into water, it goes slightly slower again. And what that does is bend light waves a little bit. So every time that it slows a little bit, the light waves might bend. Now you've actually noticed this. Here's our science experiment you've done before. Let's write waves bend. If you've ever fished, you see your fishing line going into the water and then it gets to the surface of the water and it looks like it bends and takes off in that direction. The line itself is not actually bent. You know that. It's the light waves that are bending is because they go a little slower in that water because that water is more dense than the air is. Uh, if you've ever, I don't have a setup here, but if I wanted to take this pencil and stick it in the water, or you do it with a straw in a glass of water. You ever see that, how the straw like looks like it's bent? Again, the straw is not bent. The light waves are bent because of the light traveling from one density material to another. That is called, and again, not a big deal. All this other stuff's more important. But you get to question nine, and you say, that is refraction, Mr. F. Refraction, the bending of light waves. Something we'll get into more. I don't want to go too deep on just an intro thing. So that should do it for a good old intro. Again, that's kind of the whole unit in the can. We got a bunch of lab work to do with it that'll lead into weather. It'll all be great. Thanks for sticking with me. Ooh, 16 minutes, long one. Thanks, folks. We'll see you soon.